my name is Antonio Diaz, and this is our fourth year of doing a presentation on the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo from uh, an indigenous perspective, uh, an indigenous point of view, and uh, to, I guess, break the ice, it's not from a nationalistic point of view. We, uh, the original people of this uh, continent, have never been asked if we welcomed anybody, which we did all the time. But then we were not asked to move, we were not asked to be displaced, we were not asked if borders could be placed on our lands, if uh, laws and legislations could be passed that declared us foreigners on our own land. We were never asked to participate in any of this. And uh, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo is just further testimony of this. History actually plays a role in the way that laws and legislations are formed, or should be formed. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem to. Somehow our history is more in line of a fable or a myth. But uh, the way that Spain and all other nations that, I, I've, I've declared 1492 the actual date, the start date, of the first actual world war, being that all the different nations that came and occupied our continent and declared war on the indigenous people and cultures. If you think about it, just let yourself think about it. That is what happened. If France through the north, or England through the east, or Spain through the south, uh, we were virtually under siege. Every people of this land whether you were from the north, south, east, you were besieged by, uh, by foreigners that we first welcomed and then later displaced us and formed their own governments, uh, showed us pieces of paper that declared ownership of the land that our ancestors dwelled on, and that is history. And yet it is not taken into account when any immigration legislation is proposed, maybe Everyone here can then take it to their own legislators. What is going on today, uh, by declaring Mexicans uh, criminals for crossing a river, Mexicans that probably have ancestry going back thousands of years on this continent, when we're seeing Central and South Americans, families split apart, children put in prison with their mothers for uh, private profit, this is wrong. Uh, if you can legislate that and make it morally right, I would still go against it. As a, one of our great orders and civil rights leaders of our time stated, and that's Martin Luther King, that everything that happened in Nazi Germany was legal, but it was not moral, and it was not right. And that's my, 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 my take on what I see going on and has gone on for so many years already. And I think it's up to us as individuals to address it to our legislators and say, we want to change. Mr. Obama ran on a, on, a, on a platform of change, and perhaps he'll listen to us when we say we actually want change that takes history into account when you formulate uh, laws and legislations declaring the original inhabitants of this land, foreigners and criminals, for simply using ancient migratory trails. Since uh, we still have a few more minutes, I just wanted to take the time to welcome all of you on behalf of the Mexican American Catholic College, formerly known as the Mexican American Cultural Center. We're now going to be a, a, a college that offers degrees and bachelor's and master's in, in uh, pastoral, Catholic pastoral ministry and leadership. and. Uh, we are very honored to have uh, the uh, Texas Indigenous Council and everyone that's involved with, uh, with this uh, kind of information. Um, we've worked with Antonio and, and others uh, in the past, and we're always very happy to hear <coughs> as many voices as we can uh, about different parts of the culture. And MOC began because of that whole focus was on culture, and the culture especially here in the Southwest, in San Antonio, and how it's spread to know that, that um, there's many cultures and, and we always have to 
be open to listen to the voices, and often the voices of the indigenous are not heard.